William G. Kilpatrick, Jr., 2002 83. Lucille Lucy Gloom, 2437. The three winners were Mr. Balka, Mr. Walsh, and Mrs. Bloom. At this time, I'd like to read the Code of Ethics for all school board, school board members, and then we'll, we'll proceed to the swearing-in of the newly board members. Uh, we will do it in alphabetical order. Uh, if any member has someone that they wish to have to come to the podium, uh, we'll have the swearing-in at the podium. Please invite family and friends up to the uh, podium with you. A school, school board member shall abide by the following code of ethics for school board members. One, or A, I will uphold and enforce all laws, rules, and regulations of the State Board of Education and court orders pertaining to schools. Desired changes shall be brought about only through legal and ethical procedures. B, I will make decisions in terms of educational welfare of children and will seek to develop and maintain public schools that meet the individual needs of all children, regardless of their ability, race, creed, sex, or social standing. C, I will confine my board action to policy making, planning, and appraisal, and I will help to frame policies and plans only after the board has consulted those who will be affected by them. D, I will carry out my responsibility not to administer the schools, but together with my fellow board members to see that they are well run. E, I will recognize that authority rests with the Board of Education and will make no personal promises nor take any private action. They may compromise the board. F, I will refuse to surrender my independent judgment to special interest or partisan political groups or to use the schools for personal gain or for the gain of friends. G, I will hold confidential all matters pertaining to the schools which, if disclosed, would needlessly injure individuals or the schools. In all other matters, I will provide accurate information and, in concert with my fellow board members, interpret to the staff the aspirations of the community for its schools. H, I will vote to appoint the best qualified personnel available after consideration of the recommendation of the chief administrative officer. I. I will support and protect school personnel in proper performance of their duties. J, I will refer all complaints to the Chief Administrative Officer and will act on the complaints at the public meetings only after failure of the administrative solution. At this point in time, we'll do the swearing in. I'll ask Mr. Balfour to first join us. Balco do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the governments established in the United States and this state under the authority of the people of so God. I, Daniel S. Balco, do solemnly swear that I possess the qualifications prescribed by law for the office of a member of the Board of Education, and that I will faithfully, partially, and justly perform all the duties of that office according to my best of my ability. So help me God. I affirm and declare that I am not disqualified as a voter pursuant to RS 19-4-1, that I am not disqualified due to the conviction of a crime or offense listed in NJSA 18-A-12-1. I, Lucy Bloom, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the government established in the United States and this state under the authority of the people, so help me God. I, Lucy Bloom, do solemnly swear that I possess the qualifications described by law for the office of member of a Board of Education, and that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all the duties of that office according to the best of my ability, so help me God. 
I affirm and declare that I am not disqualified as a voter pursuant to RS 19 4-1 and that I am not disqualified due to a conviction of a crime or offense listed in NJSA 18A 12-1. I, John Walsh, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the governments established in the United States and this state under the authority of the people, so help me God. I, John Walsh, do solemnly swear that I possess the qualifications prescribed by law for the office of member of Board of Education, and that I will faithfully and partially and justly perform all duties of that office according to the best of my ability, so help me God. I affirm and declare that I am not disqualified as a voter pursuant to RS 19 4-1, and that I am not disqualified due to a conviction of a crime or offense listed in NJSA 18A 12-1. Time we'll take the official roll call. Mr. Balcom? Here. Mr. Packer? Here. Mr. Bloom? Here. Mr. Brzezinski? Here. Mr. Sider? Here. Mrs. DePinto? Here. Mr. McInone? Present. Mrs. Trapp? Here. And Mr. Walsh? Here. At this point in time, I'd like to open up to the floor nominations for the position of uh, president for the Board of uh, Education for the one-year term. Mr. Board Secretary, I would like to nominate Mr. Kevin Syack for the position of president. I second that. Do I have any other nominations for the board president? Hearing none at this time, we'll take a roll call for Mr. Kevin Syack as the president for the Board of Education. Mr. Balcom? No. Mrs. Backer? No. Mrs. Bloom? Yes. Mr. Brzezinski? Yes. Mr. Sayak? Yes. Mrs. DePinto? Yes. Mr. Mackinac? Yes. Mrs. Trapp? Yes. And Mr. Walsh? Yes. Thank you. Congratulations, Mrs. Sayak. Uh, thank you to the members of the Cerebral Board of Education, and uh, I'll open it up for comments uh, in a few minutes for, uh, for all the board members, and I'll also make some comments uh, as well. But before we do that, I'd like to open it up for nominations for the Office of Vice President. Mr. President, I'd like to uh, nominate uh, Mrs. Beth Pinto for uh, Vice President. Okay, we have a motion for a nomination for Mrs. Pinto. Do we have a second? Second. A second by Mrs. Strapp. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, can I have a motion to close nominations? No so move. By Mr. McInerney, do I have a second? Second. By Mr. Strapp, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Carried. Uh, roll call vote on Mrs. DePinto. Mr. Balkin? Yes. Mrs. Backer? Yes. Mrs. Bloom? Yes. Mr. Brzezinski? Yes. Mr. Sider? Yes. Mrs. DePinto? Yes. Mr. McInerney? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Trapp? Yes. And Mr. Walsh? Yes. Okay, Mrs. DePinto, congratulations. congratulations. Uh, as I understand it, Dr. Alfano, now to celebrate this event, we have some entertainment. Correct. 
Uh, if the board is not opposed, this is actually later on our agenda, but due to the weather, uh, no one opposes, we can move it up so that the kids can entertain and they can get home before it gets even colder, I, if that's possible. Okay. I'd like to introduce, uh, I believe Mrs. Marie Malara is here. Mrs. Campbell. Oh, Mrs. Campbell. Okay. Bye bye, Birdie.
so it is with great pride and prejudice, as well as the usual pomp of circumstance, that I welcome you to our fair city and present this, a 14 karat solid gold key presented by my men at the Sweet Apple Brass Fest, as I present this to you, Conrad Burgess! <laughs>
So Mrs. Campbell, Mrs. Malaro, I want to thank you for that great performance. Let's give the kids one more round of applause. Now you know why our high school performances are also so outstanding. They start them young and they just continue right on up. All right, at this point we'll proceed with our, uh, our meeting, but I will uh, I'll open it up to comments for uh, each of the board members uh, before we begin. Uh, and if anyone wishes to offer thanks for uh, re-election, thanks for uh, board offices, or just general comments or reflections about the year ahead. And I'll start with uh, Mr. Bobbitt. I just want to thank everyone for supporting me. I promise I'm going to do another three years of hard work. Do the best job I can. I just want to congratulate the three elected officials and uh, welcome to the two new former teachers. I would like to thank everyone who supported me and if you know me, you know that I'm going to do the best that I can for the students and the staff and the district of Thank you. Also, just like to uh, thank the uh, two members that were elected. I know they're going to do a great job for us. Is that on? Okay. They're sort of on. <laughs> I'd like to congratulate the three new board members. I wish you all luck, and I'd like to thank everyone for their support on Vice Presidency, and I look forward to a great year. Thank you. Congratulations to those uh, newly elected. Uh, now you know what you have to do on, on Tuesday evenings. Um, uh, you know, to, to volunteer your time um, uh, for the school district is admirable. Um, I want to thank the board. Um, for the time that I, I served as president, it was always an honor to preside over, over this board. Um, and I want to especially thank Mr. Syak for taking the center seat. And uh, I'm just going to sit here on the side and uh, uh, say, yeah, Mr. President. Uh, I'm sure Mrs. Kilcummins um, is uh, tired of listening to my voice anyway. So now she'll have uh, someone else that uh, she can speak with. Um, again, um, congratulations. I look forward to working on this board. We have some big issues coming up, uh, the redistricting, I think. Um, is, is the biggest issue that uh, this sitting board is going to have to deal with, um, and uh, that's going to be next meeting, and hopefully that we can get that resolved. And of course, uh, Mr. Pinto, congratulations. I look forward to you reading the highlights. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to congratulate the newcomers, the old-timers, and hope for a successful year again. Thank you. I'd like to thank everybody uh, for making me feel so welcome right off the bat. And uh, I'm just eager to get to work, roll my seats up, and uh, get after it. I also want to thank all the people I worked with here for so many years, and always extremely supportive of me, and uh, made it feel, I made Sarah feel like home always. And uh, let's get to work. I just want to mention too that Mr. Walsh had mentioned it to me. That's what happens when he sings too. <laughs> <laughs> but they can't get up. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, I would also like to extend a um, uh, welcome to um, Mrs. Bloom and to uh, Mr. Walsh. Uh, and as Mrs. Backo said, having two former teachers uh, from this district on the board, uh, we haven't had that since uh, Mr. Zaleski was on the board, and I noticed that he's uh, back here tonight as well. Uh, so I look forward to that, uh, that value add once again in that perspective. Uh, Mr. Balco, welcome back. Uh, certainly your finance experience, your work with the borough has been an asset to the board, uh, and I look forward to having uh, you back as well for another uh, three years. Uh, there's two things that I really wanted to talk about tonight in terms of where, where I want to focus for the upcoming year. Uh, and Mr. McInone hit on, on part of it already. We know that we've got the redistricting plan uh, just coming up before the board on the 21st. And we know that we've got some immediate challenges that the board needs to, uh, to deal with. Um, number one, completing the, uh, the SCA negotiations, for example. Uh, negotiations are complete. We're waiting the salary guides. Hopefully we'll have that wrapped up uh, very soon and, uh, and get that concluded. We look forward to, uh, to finishing that piece up. Uh, but then the other part of, of, of what a board is, is, is here for, and, and probably the largest piece that they provide, is the vision piece. And the vision piece is where, as a board, we try to step out of the day-to-day -day in terms of developing a budget or looking at the overcrowding, which may be here now, or looking at the individual contract, which may be up for negotiation, and really focusing on the future. And one of the things that I like to make as a theme for me and, and kind of lead the board through the process is something that I like to call Vision 2030. <coughs> now, we all know what vision is, you know, basically being able to, to see the future, put a, put a plan together, and basically be able to describe in, in, in very clear detail where we're heading as a district. And I think that's important because it inspires people. People like the idea of knowing 
where they're heading, knowing where the district is going as a whole. I think it helps provide continuity and it helps people be bought into where we are as a district as a whole. So what's 2030 other than just a, a round number? Well, 2030 is the year in which the kindergartners who are going to Arliff and Truman and Wilson and Eisenhower tomorrow morning, 2030 is the year that they will graduate a four-year college. Now think about that for a second. 2030, our kindergartners now that our teachers are teaching will graduate a four-year college. They'll be 22. I'll be 55. Dr. Alfander will be retired. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Kilcummins will still be here. <laughs> but that's a tall order for a school district to, to plan for. I mean, when you think about it, what do we have to do now? In order, in order to plan for those students to be successful in 2030. What do we need to do now to increase the number of students that are attending a four-year institution when they graduate in 2026 versus the class that's graduating from 2014? And there's a whole host of issues surrounding that in terms of district culture and the personnel that we want and what type of district we want to be. When you look at the way Cerebral is changing, the point we're fortunate to have Mr. McInone on the planning board. You know, what's the point going to mean to us? I keep hearing that there's money coming. I hope it is. But as a board, we should be looking out at what that means for our district and how can we get a jump on some of these issues and using some of our committees to start grappling with the future and planning for the long term. So in terms of a theme, that's kind of what I want to take the board through as, as we go through this year. Uh, the last piece is a, me a message to our staff, and I know there's a few of you here tonight, but uh, I know there's a lot more of you who are not here tonight, and I hope that you would take this message back. One of the things that probably keeps me up at night, and one of the things that's been, been somewhat uh, a little bit nervous for me taking the presidency right now is the number of departures that we've had from the district. And it's not just teachers, it's also administrators, it's, it's across the board. We're losing a lot of people. And when you look at where they're going, you know, if a teacher's leaving here, chances are they're making another $10,000. Administrators are making fifteen dollars to $20,000 more. So we've got a real financial problem in terms of salaries. And I'm hoping that as we complete this round of negotiations with our staff, that all of you will see that this board is making that effort, that that effort has already begun. I'm hoping that as we negotiate with our administrators, we'll also be able to fix some of the trouble spots because I know people think administrators are, are, are high paid, but when you look at our salaries in some spots of, of our guides, it's not necessarily a true statement across the board. So we've got an opportunity there as well. But the final part, beyond just the financial piece, is please send a message back that this board gets it, and I think especially with the election of two former teachers to the board, that we want to look at the whole culture piece as well. We've got pockets in this district that from a cultural perspective are doing great. Our staff would jump through hoops for their administrators, for one another. It's a team effort. And we want to look to, at what's working in those pockets and we want to expand it throughout the entire district. We want to look for ways to be able to recognize and say thank you to our staff and bring back a great culture in this district that Mr. Walsh and I graduated together from because both of us are members of class of 93 and we remember that culture very well. And it's not extinct. It's alive and well in many, many areas in this district. But we've got some work to do where I think we can expand it and make it stronger and make it better. So I ask if you're a staff member here, please take that message back to your colleagues. Give us as a board a chance to work through some of these issues and I think you'll be glad that you stayed with us because it's a great district, the kids are great, and we have some of the best people around, whether it's parents, volunteers, teachers, or administrators, and support staff. I'm really appreciative of all the work that our staff does. And with that, let's get to work. Uh, I guess this is my portion to take through, and then we'll get to you, right? Uh, I, I can take this. You can take, okay. Sure. I'll take it easy. It's been a while right. since I've been here, so. Uh, we're on number nine, for everyone. Uh, page two. Uh, these are all board for new uh, meeting dates. Uh, Ten is the board secretary, which is Mr. DeAndrea. 
Eleven is the compliance officer, which again is Mr. DeAndrea. He's a popular guy. Um, purchasing agent, number 12, is Mr. DeAndrea. No, he's not the affirmative action officer. That's Ms. Pacendo. Um, treasurer of school monies is Mr. Kronowski. Um, the law firm uh, is um, Schwartz, Simon, Edelstein, and Celso, which is number 15. Number 16 is the uh, fiscal uh, policy on fiscal procedures on checks and balances. Uh, official newspapers are the Home News Tribune and the Star Ledger, as noted in number 17. Um, our official depositories are noted in number 18. Uh, the, the board auditor, which is on page 6, is Samuel Klein. And um, I will defer to you. Okay, is there any is there any board discussion on the items on the agenda or questions or comments? I have a concern, concern with number nine, with the June 17th date. Uh, I know we like to move money to capital reserve at the end of the year, not that late enough for a video to our <coughs> kind of money we're having fund balance to do that. Is that uh, the goal was as, as we got closer to the that timing period, we can set up a special meeting instead of setting in now to have a third meeting, leave it more flexible for the end of June, once we knew the, uh, when we were closer to that point in time. That's the only reason I don't know. Yeah. <coughs> Number 14, I want to stay on. Yes. Yeah. Any other comments from uh, the board members? All right, hearing none, I'll open it up to public on the agenda items that we've just discussed. Uh, there'll be an opportunity to comment on the superintendent's report as well later. If you wish to speak, please come to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Okay, hearing none, we'll close public. Can I have a motion to approve items 1 through 19? So moved. By Mr. McInnell, do I have a second? Second. By Mr. Walsh, do I uh, have any comments? Hearing none, roll call. Mr. Balcon. Yes, except I have noted. Mr. Backer. Yes. Mr. Bloom. Yes. Mr. Brzezinski. Yes. Mrs. DePinto? Yes. Mr. McInnell? Yes. Mrs. Trapp? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. And Mr. Simon? Yes. Dr. Alfano, moving to your superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Simon. Uh, before I start, I would just like to congratulate you as the new president, um, three new board members, good luck. Is there anything I could do? And of course, Ms. Beth, good luck to you as the VP. Also, would like to comment um, on Mr. McInnell. I think we've been together, what, seven years? I'm married. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just we want to. We're working together. Yes. Yeah. And I, and I, okay. I just clarifying that. Shared leadership is certainly yeah, a, a, and shared responsibilities. Um, I really appreciate your dedication. Um, and uh, going to miss you. The calls are like, you know, a few times a week where we sort of commiserate what's going on in the district. But I do appreciate everything you've done. You've really helped me a lot in, in my journey as the superintendent, so I just wanted to make a note of that. You'll still, you'll still be hearing from him. He's not going anywhere. So. Yeah, I'm not going to even go I changed my phone. <laughs> <laughs> but good luck to everybody. And uh, this is a new board, and hopefully it'll be as exciting year as it's been in the past. But moving along, building to grounds, there's no report. Finance is only one small bill, which is uh, noted. Um, on page 7 is uh, personnel, non-certified. Those are the professional days. D, personnel certified. There's to accept the resignation. And I'd just like to make a comment. Mr. Curry was probably one of the first people I met 14 years ago when it came to Sayreville. True professional. We're really going to miss him. I wish him well and Godspeed. And uh, I sort of um, understand what Kevin is saying. I'm concerned about the same thing. Um, and certainly, um, he will be missed. Uh, we're in the process, obviously, of getting someone of his caliber. Number two is an unpaid medical leave. Um, three is professional days, as noted. Number four and five are the individuals that are going to one of the biggest conferences on technology. Uh, and this year, we're bringing a few teachers with us who seem to be very interested in technology as far as um, in the classroom 
and I think it's a good opportunity for them to really see what goes on. So it's, it's, it really is a very, very good uh, uh, workshop. I think this year there's about 700 people going. It's a real big one this year. Number six is um, the employment of the following individuals, seven and eight or substitutes. Uh, e, there is no policy. Um, F, Mr. President, I'm going to ask to table that. F1, because we didn't discuss it, we're going to go into close. Um, I prefer to table it. We can come out but close tonight and then approve it because I have to get, by law, I have to get out those um, letters to the, to the parents and give you an update. So I, I prefer to table that right now. Um, with this vote, G, there is no report. Support services, there's one trip, as noted. Just a, a question for the attorney on that. Is there an issue with going into close and then coming out? No. There's not. Um, you know, so long as it's done, and it always would be, I'm sure, with this board, but out of respect to the public in a way that gives the public a reasonable time frame as to when the board would return, I'm okay with it. Mr. President, okay. I, it, 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 I can't see it being more than five minutes. Right, so if, it would, if, we, if yes. the other issue we need to discuss, we might have to go in and come out. Go in. Yeah, that's what I would do. Yes. We, we'd we'd immediately do go in, like Mr. McEnroe said, it's five minutes. I have to, by law, get out these letters to these individuals so that I can and it's uh, a topic move on. Of student discipline. Yes, so it should be good. Yeah. Okay, that concludes my report, Mr. President. Okay, is there any public participation on the agenda items on the report? Okay, hearing none, I should have done this first. Is there any board discussion on the agenda items on the report? Um, I just have a question. Uh, Dr. Alfano, the two teachers that are going to this expo, how, how did we choose two teachers out of all the teachers? Like, how Do you name Mr. Yeah. Mrs. Becker, those two teachers are actually participating on the Sayreville War Memorial High School Strategic Planning Committee. Um, both teachers are attempting to integrate pretty high-level technology into their classrooms. We opened up um, volunteers to everyone on the Strategic Planning Committee, and it was pretty much first come, first served. Um, Sarah and Keith were the first two at that. So, yeah. They're very good. I mean, it's, good it's a good conference. As a matter of fact, Alan November is one of the best speakers that there is, and he's the opening, he's the opening speaker in technology. And I also know uh, that Mrs. McGaw is flipping her classroom yes, in terms of instructions. Yes. I don't know if the other individual is as well. Um, He's using different types of different technology, types of but this is McGaw's using flipped classroom where the kids actually... I'm going to try that administration. The what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> and this is also a great way to recognize our staff as well. Yes. Yeah, it's... it's yes. Any other questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, roll call on the superintendent's report. Need a motion. Please. That's a good point. Now, a motion on the superintendent's report. Mrs. DePinto. By Mrs. DePinto, do I have a second? Second. By Mrs. Bloom. Now I'll take a roll. Mr. Balka. Yes. Mrs. Backer. Yes. Mrs. Bloom. Yes. Mr. Brzezinski. Yes. Mr. DePinto. Yes. Mr. McEnroe. Uh, with, with comment. Um, it's with regret that I vote um, to approve uh, Mr. Curry's resignation. Uh, I spoke with him yesterday. Uh, he communicated with me again today. Um, I always found Sean to be uh, a person of integrity, uh, a person of a stand up character. And I knew Sean um, as an educator, uh, as my student, uh, my own kids had him um, long before I became on the Board of Education. I worked most closely with him on the board um, in student discipline uh, hearings. Um, he was always prepared, um, was always uh, very passionate uh, about the students and always came down on the side um, in the best interests of the students. Um, um, I'm going to miss him both professionally and, and personally, not to mention he was one hell of a defensive football coach. But uh, he was just a good guy and is something that in the military we refer to as a, as a blue chip, a stand around, a all around good guy. And, and it's with regret that um, I vote yes uh, to include uh, proof of his resignation. Mrs. Trapp? Yes. And Mr. Walsh. Yes. Any board discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, just two additional comments. One, I want to echo what Mr. McInone had said regarding uh, Mr. Curry. Uh, he will certainly be missed. Uh, he was you know, one of the people that I referred to in my comments earlier today. But, but the other part about losing him is not only do we lose the talent that he brings, not only do we lose uh, you know, his connection to Cerebral and, and, and being part of the fabric of, of this district, but the other part we lose is what we in corporate America call our bench, and people in the coaching world may call it the bench too. 
Um, basically, we lose the people that we're counting on to be able to start moving up and, and moving forward. And you know, when you look at who's behind Mr. Curry, we've lost a great deal of that bench. You know, Mike Salem, who left the district, who had his administrator certificate. Uh, Dan Brack, uh, Jamel Maroon. Uh, you know, there were a lot of people there that, that we, uh, we, we've lost as a, as a result of going to, uh, to other, other districts. Uh, the other person I would like to thank also is uh, Mr. McInone for his service as board president. Uh, he and I have enjoyed a very good working relationship together as president and vice president. Uh, I think uh, one of the uh, probably best things that we did together was the facilitation of the uh, board uh, redistricting discussion that we had here a few months ago, which resulted in the, uh, in the, in the consultant uh, piece come out. Uh, so we've worked very well together during our, our, our tenure, and uh, he's been very good for, uh, for the district. So Mr. McInone, I want to thank you for your support, both personally, uh, as well as all of your support of this, all of your support for the students of the district. I'm still here. I appreciate the comments. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, I like working on the team, and anything I can do to help the team, uh, I'm available. Okay. All right, there's no other discussion. We will open it up to public for any item concerning the district. You're not going to give me a warm-up period, are you? I would have been, would have been disappointed. In <laughs> fact, I would encourage you to come. I know. You did the last time you weren't president also. <laughs> you were uh, congratulations to the new board members. And I look forward to working with all of you. And hopefully you vote the right way. Um, Mr. Syak, you have a vision, which is, I'm very happy about. Um, a few of your comments, I have touched upon them five, six years ago when I commented about the morale problem and all. And I think a lot of them, many times, either your head's in the sand or a few members' heads are in the sand and they didn't want to realize it. And I kept trying to tell you there was a morale problem and you didn't focus on that. So hopefully, I agree with you. I hope you follow through on your vision. And it's just like the roofs. We need a new roof maintaining the buildings and what, um, a lot of it is money well spent. And I agree, salaries are, not just administrative salaries, salaries across the board to retain good teachers. Um, I also have a question, and I'm not on Facebook, but all of you know I speak to a lot of people in town, and a lot of people call me, and especially when they're problems. Um, the mayor said I should get paid as a town advocate. Um, I received a phone call about the power outage that affected four elementary schools and Arlet, Truman, Eisenhower, and I believe it was also slower, I'm not sure, but I'm, no. No, just the um, three. Just the three. And there was a traffic or someone hit a uh, transformer on 35. But apparently the outage was out between quarter to nine to 11.30. And I was told that normally a fireman would come to each school if they had the outage for safety. <clears throat> um, no fireman was called. And this was brought to my attention by a few. And the emergency lights only last with battery for a short time. And I'm sure there was no phone service. And I don't know if it affected the heat or not. But these are elementary children to be out of power for that long. So I just wanted to know what necessary precautions were done or you know. Do Dr. Alfano advised the board <laughs> that uh, first of all, the heat was functioning. Um, the reason that we didn't send the students home was because Dr. Alfano was in touch with JCPNL. We had an estimated time of when the power would come back on, which would be around 11, 11, 15. So we knew the amount of time that we were dealing with. We had a, since they're all neighborhood schools, we had a concern that chances are if the power was out in neighborhood schools, if we sent students home early, that they'd be going to homes which had power out and possibly parents not home as well. So that was a concern. And to the best of my knowledge, although you didn't address it, Dr. Alfano, I believe all of our fire alarm systems are on a battery backup. So that should there be a fire, they would still communicate. Plus, and they're also direct line and not going through the PBX system. Let, let me just, the electricity went off approximately 9.15, returned 10.45. We were in touch with 
two of the fire uh, marshals, one was Kevin, and the other the gentleman came to Eisenhower School. They inspected all the schools. They, they, we even asked them, is, this, is there any concern with us keeping the buildings open? They said, no, you have everything under control. We were in every single building. Students were probably out of power about an hour and a half. Teachers did a wonderful job. Administrators, students were fed. There was, you know, it, lunches went on as normal. It, the only thing we didn't have was light. I mean, there's not really much we could have done about that, but we had enough of residual light and enough of residual heat where the buildings were actually warm. Thank God it was a, it was a day where it was, uh, you know, 55 degrees out, 50 degrees. If it was today, we'd have a real big problem. Uh, but the teachers were great. I mean, I walked into a couple of the buildings and kids were being taught, and it, it started about right after the, the kids had, were let off the bus. Uh, it, there was a, the outage was on 35, and then I believe right by Eisenhower School, they had one of the transformers blew right there too. So all three schools, parts of South Amboy were out, and uh, subsequently uh, it went relatively smooth. And thank God, by, right, uh, the internet is a, is a good thing sometimes because very quickly we knew that uh, PS, uh, the JCPNL had given us an estimated time of about 11 o'clock. And I'm always concerned about letting children home, going home in the middle of the day. You have more of a chance, God forbid, something happened to them. They are the safest in the buildings than sending them home. Well, and Dr. Alfano, I would suggest if this happens again or whatever, we, like you said, the internet is a wonderful thing, but we have the phone system, but just to alert these parents, to put their peace of mind or to even what transpired, or even to reiterate what you're just telling me. Um, so these parents are concerned, and they still must be concerned. Mrs. Kilcoming's I'm letters. I'm not on Facebook. A lot of them are on Facebook. I, I get that it. could be a terrible tool, and it could be a good tool. But it's, it's sort of like that woman that got a, um, a date on the internet, a you know, French guy. But the, the, <laughs> bottom, line, the bottom line is, is that um, <laughs> The bottom line is, is that the parents were notified. The letter went home. After it was over, there was no reason to send a parent message home because I didn't want to create some sort of hysteria. And we knew that the lights were going to come back on, according to JCPNL, in approximately an hour and a half. We and and you weren't even sure with the board that if it didn't come on by 11.30, Right, then I was going, going to send a parent message out because I didn't... Once they hear the parent message, they think that we're having a one o'clock day. So I want to be very careful about, I am, you know, I, I don't like to send kids home when parents aren't home. And, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a difficult situation. So I, I, I think the teachers did a wonderful job. The administrators and the kids were, were, were uh, that was a little dark, but it worked out. Um, Mr. Sai, if I could, to address the one other issue with the fire alarms. Uh, when, once we did notice that the outage occurred, we brought in our full maintenance staff and we went on fire watch in all three buildings so that in case there was an emergency situation, we had people in all parts of the building so that they could respond in case there was an issue. So we immediately went into our fire watch once the power was uh, down. So we, we did take those precautions with the uh, support of the fire marshals. I'm going to say uh, we've had problems district-wide with the heat today. Uh, several buildings had issues, and that's just due to the uh, temperature drop uh, that occurred. We had different boilers go down, but uh, once again, the maintenance staff were out there fixing things, and I, I know that I had a maintenance gentleman on the roof of uh, the high school today working outside in this weather to get, uh, believe it or not, an air conditioning unit working because our internet service went down because the uh, air conditioning system froze, which makes sense in this weather, but it happened to freeze in our uh, technology room. So we lost power because the room got up to 110 degrees. So uh, we've had problems all day and we're, we're knocking on wood that we don't have the same problems tomorrow. Mr. Syak, I'm in my 70s right now, 20, 30, 
I do three puzzles a day to try to keep my brain going, but who knows, I may be 89 years old and still back here at the board. You will be here, I guarantee you. <laughs> Anyone else for public? Okay, the, uh, the board is going to retire into executive session for several matters, uh, one of which will be student discipline. The only action we will take tonight will be on the student discipline piece. Uh, there will be no other action taken by the board. Is that sufficient? Yes. yes. What's, what's several matters? We're, we're going we're to list them when we go in. Oh, you're going to list them? No, yeah. you have to list them. No, no, we're going we're to list them right now as part, of, as part of the resolution. Uh, we have student discipline, and then Dr. Alfano has requested a uh, executive session regarding the superintendent's contract. And then we should also have one with regard to attorney-client privilege so that the board can brief the, uh, the attorney, can brief the board, particularly the new board members, with regard to the expectations of closed session. That, that's great. But as well, if I can add to that, if something's come up today, uh, tuition collection from former employees. Okay. I promise that'll be quick for it. Yeah. I'll do my best. Unless you make it long, I'll do my best to be short. I guarantee I'm that five minutes. Five minutes. And I have a motion to go into executive I session I on, I, I, well, you have to read it first before the, and the old, read away. The old, and, and, and to correct, if I can, uh, Mr. President, am I correct in stating that the only action you intend to take when you come back out will be on the student disciplinary matters, is that correct? Correct, no other action will be taken, except adjourning, because we have to get out. I have a motion to go into executive. Second. Whereas section eight of the Open Public Meeting Act, chapter 231 PL 1975, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas this public body is the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, now, therefore, it be resolved by the Board of Education, Borough of Sable, County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, as follows. The public shall be excluded from discussion of any action upon the here and after specified subject matters. General nature of the subject matter to be discussed is as follows. Student discipline, superintendent contract, under attorney-client privilege, board executive session, tuition reimbursement. It is anticipated at this time that the above stated subject matter shall be made public at such time as the need for non-disclosure no longer exists. This resolution shall take effect immediately. Mr. Balka. Yes. Mrs. Bacta. Yes. Mr. Bloom. Yes. Mr. Brzezinski. Yes. Mr. DePinto. Yes. Mr. McEnone. Yes. Mrs. Trapp. Yes. And Mr. Walsh. Yes. And Mr. Simon. Yes. All right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and we'll see you on the 21st. Don't forget that is also our redistricting meeting where the consultant will be presenting uh, his uh, recommendations and findings. So we look forward to having you. Do I need to return to public? Yes. Yeah. Sign by the motion to return back to public. I have a motion by Mr. McEnone. Do I have a second to return to public? Second. Second by Mrs. DePinto. Any remarks? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Roll call. Uh oh. Yeah. Roll call. Trying to speak to someone. For clarification, the board is only coming back into a uh, public session. To vote on curriculum F1. Yeah. Mr. Balka? Yes. Mr. Bacto? Yes. Mr. Bloom? Yes. Mr. Brzezinski? Yes. Mr. Pinto? Yes. Mr. McEnone? Yes. Mr. Trapp? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Mr. Yes. Simon? Yes. Motion to approve F1. Do I have a motion? Yes. F1 as curriculum. Curriculum F1. No, no, no. Uh, no. Video, I have to revise that. Yeah. It's That's not fine, guys. a hearing of three, it's a hearing of two. Only two. Not only approving two, two. The agenda will reflect only two. One and two. Okay, can I have a motion to approve F1 A and B? So moved. By Mrs. DePinto, do I have a second? Second by Mr. Strath. Mr. Balka? Yes. Mr. Bacco? Yes. Mr. Bloom? Yes. Mr. Brzezinski? Yes. Mrs. DePinto? Yes. Mr. McEnone? Yes. Mrs. Trapp? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Simon? Yes. Okay. Now, for the benefit of the public, the only action we will take now after this will be to adjourn. Do we need another resolution to go into close, or we can just go back in there? Because, just, of, because of the scenario, I'll advise you that the only thing you need to do is have the media say that you're back in the close for the reasons you previously, previously stated. Thank you. Thank you. We're going back into executive at 842. So we've dealt with the student discipline issue. The other items we will still be discussing, but there will be no further action other than adjournment. Thank you all for coming. Just Kevin. Formally, we're going to do a motion and second, and then we'll come. I make a motion, Mr. Sack, that we go back into executive. All right, Mr. Bacco, do I have a second? Second, Mr. Balco. Yes. Mr. Bacco. Yes. Mr. Bloom. Mr. Brzezinski. Yes. Mr. Pinto. Yes. Mr. McEnone. Mr.
Trapp, yes. Mr. Walsh, yes. and Mr. Simon. Yes. Mr. McEnroe, these meetings are a lot less confusing. <laughs>